Hello guys and welcome to another video. Today we're gonna talk more in depth about these fuckers here. How they work, how you can fix them and how to bring your bikes back to life. It's been uh, overwhelming how many of you uh, send me emails and uh, it's more overwhelming that I notice that Many of you are shops around the world struggling to fix this bike due to lack of support from Van Moof. I want to tell you that even Van Moof, they've been fucked over from somebody else, like uh, Dinapak and uh, all these third parties that uh, they sign contract with. So they lost their business because they didn't have a good engineers to figure out this before they start signing contracts so most of builders this is manufacturer if it's car if it's bike anything that is they don't have everything in store so they have to sign contracts with third party component makers but these guys they don't always use the best parts when it's coming to new customers so van move he was promising he was going high but they didn't control the manufacturing side and they got screwed over very bad so these batteries are very easy to understand. So, first of all, if you have a dead battery, you don't just take your thingy and start measuring, okay, it's dead. No. So, this BMS will keep everything shut from outside world. So, this BMS will not let you measure the voltage here yeah, so I'm talking here. It will not let you manage the, the measure the voltage because it's shut. It might have an error. So I showed you in the previous video how to reset the error. Maybe it doesn't work. So this video in particularly is made for professional repair shops. So it's not for DIYers. I don't recommend anybody with no knowledge of electronics to go and uh, do repairs on these guys. These are very dangerous. So only one of these bikes, if it catches on fire, it will burn a house down. So this is not a joke. And I mean it. This is not a joke. I'm a qualified electronic engineer. Yes, I'm a van mover. And uh, the thing is that I had my bike and I saw the problems and uh, I started doing repairs on my own. So only yesterday I did this that is going to a shop and they are refurbished. So I have to put everything back together. But it's not a joke. So today I'm going to show you as a shop repair, as a professional repairer, because I know that many of you around the world that they called Van Move and they said, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how to do this. Because they don't know. And you have to trust them. They don't know. They manage this business as they answer. I don't know. Because all these components they made from third party. What they're best of is making bikes, not electronics. So probably they will, would, or they could fix the problem by hiring a qualified engineer. Not the one who makes calculations in virtual life, but one that really knows what the fuck he's talking about. So, yes, let's see. I have a battery here and I took it on purpose is dead so I'm not bothering with this 
this is dead you need one of these if you don't have one of these you find it in the bike because there is no parts available this you find it in the bike you just cut it from the harness of the bike and you use it i have plenty and i use them for charge for data connection to my computer to check in depth the errors and the problems with these batteries so you need one of these and thick red wire thick black wire thin red wire thin black wire so thin ones are charge side yeah thick ones this charge side yeah it's easy so I'm gonna show you so plug it in as you can see this jumping this jumping means that it's uh, VMS doesn't allow charge okay so by jumping I can see 19 volts 20 volts is going up but to get rid of the error without resetting I just take the discharge side put it in here I'm just gonna hold it will push current continuously through both ways just to go for some time you see it's still jumping but now just take it off plug it again we need to get it stabilized we need to see continuous charge voltage So this is only for batteries around 18-ish volts. Under, you'll have problems. So these BMS, they shut down around 35 volts-ish. They shut down because we'll show you error six. Under the voltage. And uh, the same like a drill, like everything. You need to push voltage like straight into his neck yes so we managed to stabilize it we I removed the discharge side and he's only taking power on the charge side so now I stabilize it and I reset the BMS by this method without taking it off and doing this so this one had error six now the error is gone because it's charging without data so you don't worry about the data i have here all the data this is when you have a software and you plug it to your computer so this is one thing this is how to do this reset so i resetted with the thing okay and then I'll let this charge for a while, for a while. Okay, so this is the charge, how you do. Regarding repairing this. So if you have, because most of them have blown fuses. And I want to go more in depth with that. Also, I have many, many things to tell you. So I'm not worried about this. I'm going to put it in here for me and then I'll let it charge as you can see sometimes it's jumping again so I just do this come on stop jumping and start charging it's because it's low voltage so I shouldn't take it off because you start to get the error but yeah yeah so you see you just I give it a push and then it start by itself okay so I receive and I fixed hundred of these but before start fixing these you need to understand 
some basics. If you have your fuse blown, there are two ways how this two ways this flu fuse got blown. One is over voltage. So customer left the bike on charge for too many hours. Voltage rise it too much, and this detects this side of the BMS detects over voltage, and this fuse have three pins. Two pins is the fuse. Three, the third pin is the heater. So when this start, when the voltage start growing, heater will blow the fuse to prevent any further damage. Again, I want to show you something. This, I see this, many customers, they send me for repair. This is no, no, this is no, 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 no. If you shunt the fuse, thinking that you solve the problem, you're gonna have a big problem. So don't do that. Don't do that. Don't, don't. Because you're gonna forget one day your bike on charge and you come back home and is full of firefighters. So don't do that. This fuse is with a purpose. And also is going, is burning with a purpose. So if you are a shop repairer and you have a battery with blown fuse, first of all, you need to figure out why this fuse has blown. So if you just replace it and go two weeks down the road, they'll come back to you and say, oh, it's not working. So we have 10 cells in series. So while you're charging, is if one of these cells has a voltage run up, so when a voltage start to rise in one cell, because you put 42 volts across, maybe a bit more, because those charges, they do 43 volts. So when one row of cells is enough, one cell to have a voltage run out, means that batteries, old batteries, they start degrading, degradating. So capacities start cha changing. One have a bigger one, one small one, so they're not equal anymore. After one, two years of use, they're not equal. So when, let's just say this row of cells will reach 4.2 volts, BMS cannot balance it because this one is rising like crazy. It's rising the voltage. So if one row of cells will rise the voltage, will make overall voltage to rise and the fuse is blowing. I always recommend, especially old bikes, don't charge over 80% because you leave a gap for this problem. If one of the cells have a lower capacity, by charging at 80%, you avoid a voltage run out because when that happens this blows okay many of them they're blowing when they're fully charged i've seen batteries 50 volts rising because of uh, they're full and then is enough just overcharge them for a few hours because that charger will push voltage it doesn't stop even if it's green it will push few milliamps few milliamps in few hours is enough to fuck one of your cells. So don't do that. Always recommend 80%. Don't go lower than 20, don't go higher than 80. So if you have fuse problems, don't just replace them. You can check if there is a short before you put the fuse. If there is no short, be sure to check all the cells. You need to figure out if it's blown by over voltage previously or one row of cells had a voltage run out. And 
erase the voltage across the whole pack. If you do that and you figure what's wrong, you're going to save the battery and uh, it's going to work. Otherwise, it will not work. So that's about it. Uh, we'll go on holiday until the 27th. But if you have any questions, I'm here to help. Hopefully, my video will help you to figure this out. So, yeah. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day. I'm sorry that I don't have much to, <laughs> to edit the video and uh, my shop is a mess. But uh, I hope I, you learned something today. And please follow me because I'm going to put some more of these videos. Until the next time.